Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org, and I'm back this time with the first of my coronavirus-induced videos, comparing a couple of nice variable neutral density filters. This one is a 6 to 9 stop model made by Moment, a company based right here in Seattle, and they sent it to me along with a 2 to 5 stop model to try out a little over a month ago. And the other is the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon edition, also a 6 to 9 stop model, which Polar Pro sent to me about this time last year. As you'd expect, they're very similar devices, with a threaded ring that screws onto the lens and a second ring that rotates to change the density. There is at least one more major difference, though, and that's the price. The Moment filter costs $169 for a 77mm filter, while the Polar Pro filter costs $299, nearly twice as much. So is there any visible difference between the images that these filters produce? And is the Polar Pro worth the extra money? The quick answer is yes. There is sometimes a visible difference, but it's a difference that won't matter to most of us. I'll explain what I mean by that as we go along, so let's get started with the details. The stop indicator markers on the Moment filter are printed on an angled ring, such that if you're looking down the barrel of the lens from behind the camera, you can clearly see where the filter is set. That's a clever design feature, I think. But the first major difference between the two brands is what you see in the first few minutes after you purchase them. The Polar Pro comes with some seriously fancy packaging. First, there's an outer box sleeve, then an elegantly decorated box inside that, and inside of that, you'll find a hard filter case, a rubber Defender-style filter cap, an info pack with a sticker in there, a soft filter case, plus a lens cleaning cloth and other odds and ends that are not in the picture here. The Moment filter, on the other hand, comes in a minimalist, black-on-black, -black, smooth metal case. The top screws into the bottom half, and there's some padding and a little protective cloth inside, and that's all. I generally don't care much about fancy packaging, but I should say that when I am out shooting with these two filters, I keep the Polar Pro in its hard case and the Moment filter in the Polar Pro soft case, because the threaded closure of the Moment case is just too tricky to work with in the rain and cold that I've been shooting in. Of course, if you already have a special wallet for all of your filters, this isn't going to be a concern. So I took both sets of filters out shooting. If you saw my original review of the Polar Pro, you might recognize these shots from the Columbia River, down on the Oregon border across from Astoria, and out at the Washington coast near Ruby Beach. Since I'd already spent some time shooting with the 6-9 stop Polar Pro, I gave most of my attention to the 6-9 stop Moment filter when I went out shooting with them last month. But in fact, there is not a lot to distinguish them in the field. Operation is the same with both filters, and I couldn't see any obvious differences through the viewfinder. And ultimately, when I checked them out on my computer back at home, there were no differences in sharpness or resolution between the filters either. Of course, I had a fair amount of trouble autofocusing with both of them, so I used manual focus a lot of the time, but that's par for the course with ND filters. Just a few days before the governor ordered everyone to stay at home, I took some shots of the skyline at sunset, too. Since I didn't run into major differences in handling or image quality in the field, let's take a look at a few more technical details. First, I wanted to check and see what the absolute f-stop values were for these filters. And at the same time, I'd be able to see if they truly offer a full three stops of variation. I also wanted to check and see whether they're really neutral in color, and finally, whether they cause any vignetting or other problems with light transmission. Checking the f-stop values was pretty easy. I shot a gray card with the camera set to use spot metering, a constant aperture, ISO, and white balance, and I let the light meter tell me what the shutter speed should be. First, 
I shot with no filter to get a baseline reading. And then of course I shot at six, seven, eight, and nine stop values with both filters. Using continuous LED lighting with no filter, I was reading a 200th of a second. Starting with the moment filter at its six stop position, I got a reading of 0.5 seconds, which is actually more than six stops difference. It's blocking six and two thirds stops of light. Set to seven, I got 0.8 seconds, which is only two thirds of a stop more instead of a full stop. Set to eight, I got 1.6 seconds, which is a full f-stop difference. And finally, Set to nine, the exposure was 2.5 seconds, which is only two thirds of a stop more. But it is the only setting where the expected f-stop value matches the actual f-stop value. It really is nine stops less light than no filter at all. For the Polar Pro, again, I got a baseline of a 200th of a second with no filter. And with the filter set to six, I got an exposure of 0.3 seconds which is exactly six stops darker, matching the expected value perfectly. But set to seven, my exposure was 0.5 seconds, only two thirds of a stop darker than six. I set it to eight and got an exposure of one full second, which is exactly one stop darker than the seven setting. And set to nine, I got 1.6 seconds, only two thirds of a stop darker again and significantly brighter than the expected value of nine stops. So both filters only have a variable range of about two and a third stops. But on the moment filter, you lose the bright end of the range. And on the Polar Pro, it's the dark end. From my experience with multiple filters from both of these brands, I'd expect some variation in where this range falls between six and nine stops, and the exact range might vary slightly too. So for practical purposes, I consider these two filters roughly equivalent in this regard. So let's take a look at the neutrality of these filters. With my camera set to a fixed white balance, this is what a gray card looked like with no filter on at all. With the moment filter on, you can see that things look significantly warmer. The Polar Pro is also warmer than neutral, but not as warm as the moment. This is the most significant difference in optical quality between the two filters, the one that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And it won't matter to most photographers because if you shoot raw, it's simple to correct. In fact, it disappears even if you use auto white balance when you're shooting or if you set your camera's custom white balance before you shoot video. Still, it can have a minor effect on the contrast between colors, so it's worth keeping in mind. And finally, before I wrap this up, let's take a look at the filter's vignetting. And to do that, it's helpful to understand how variable neutral density filters work. These filters are generally made with two polarizers that are stacked on top of each other. As you probably know, individual polarizers will block some directional light, but when they're used together and adjusted correctly, they block light uniformly. If they're not adjusted correctly though, and you'll see this in some cheap ND filters, the polarizers will create an X-shaped interference pattern across the frame. That doesn't happen with either of these two filters. There's no X pattern or vignetting when shooting subjects like this paper under diffuse lighting. And if you shoot an evenly cloudy sky on a spring day in Seattle, you'll also get nice even results, regardless of the filter settings, most of the time. On rare occasions, when the circumstances are just right, you'll get a bit of a polarization effect with these filters still. As you can see in the upper left corner of this frame here, and slightly in the lower right. The same thing is true here. This should be an evenly gray sky, but it looks darker and bluer up in the corner here. I've seen this with both filters, and it looks like on the Polar Pro, it happens primarily at the six stop setting, but my notes aren't good enough to be sure where it happens on the moment filter. Still, this is a rarity and it's not unique to either brand. So where does that leave us? Polar Pro is certainly the better option if you want better packaging and accessories. 
but when it comes to handling, I'd give a slight edge to the moment, simply because of the way that the markings on the filter are positioned to be visible from behind the camera. When it comes to f-stop accuracy, neither one is perfect, but they're both equally imperfect. And the same thing is true when it comes to the f-stop range. The Polar Pro certainly has less of a warm color cast, and when it comes to vignetting and other artifacts, they're both about the same, but I may need to investigate a bit further. And then of course, there's the price difference of $130. It's a pretty dramatic price difference, and for my style of shooting, I'd probably prefer to buy two moment filters rather than a single Polar Pro. But there's certainly a case to be made for Polar Pro if you shoot video and don't have as much room to play with color correction, and of course, if you like the accessories that come with it. And I'll leave it at that for now, but as I'm at home over the next couple of months, I'm hoping to complete a couple more videos, including one comparing the Sigma 14-24 f2.8 art series lens, and the Tamron 17-28 f2.8, both for Sony E-mount. And if I manage to get out and shoot a bit more, also the Sigma 24-70, versus the Tamron 28-75, also for Sony E-mount. So if you're interested in those, please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss them when they're ready. And that's it. I'll see you next time. Stay safe out there.